The following episode contains references to abandonment and murder. A full list of content notes, as well as a description of every notable character in this episode, can be found in the episode's description. Previously on Quest Friends. For one reason or another, you are now following a small strange child. Made it clear she's following me. Uh-huh. Keep telling yourself that. You have gone further down the path, and a man lounges along the parapet, and he motions with his head to a very cool fantasy looking motor tricycle. <laughs> Has your writer friend slain many monsters? The story it tells you is actually a bloodshed. Oh. <laughs> this man kills monsters. You better leave us alone. Otherwise, we'll have to protect ourselves. When I kick the man, he tumbles down the ravine towards the bottom. And then the previously scared crocodile people come out and start licking their chops. As a result of this refusal to mind my manners, I have codified a belief. Uh, murder is okay. have been smoothed by the waves. The sky is gray and heavy, and there's a chill in the breeze. Foam bubbles on the tide. You've made your way across the bridge. The man you met was just floundering and yelling angrily and stomping his little feet (laughs) and seeing that he had no weapon, he fled and The crocodile monsters were saved. (laughs) You saved them. Hooray! Yay! They're still hungry for human flesh. Because the man got away. Did they at least get a nibble? Just a little taste. Just a toe as a treat. No. I don't know. You can't tell if the screaming is anger at being pushed into a stream, fear at crocodile monsters, or mutilation. You don't know. But we just keep going. You just keep going. <laughs> Riding on our sick tricycle. <laughs> do, 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 do. You've taken along the tricycle. Is there a horn? So he doesn't even have a ride when he gets back up there. Yeah, I know. don't know. Is there a horn? Yes. I said off screen, I'm going to engage in wild rumpus. I'm going to do that right now. Roll when you sing, dance, or otherwise engage in boisterous merrymaking. <laughs> it's murder. Oh, God, yes. Let's tear up the road. Uh, And that's an eight. So who joins Little Reverie and what help do they offer? Muffy is just tearing down this motorcycle. Tricycle. But what does Muffy ask in return? Just to make this even more exciting and dangerous, Muffy is going to stand on the handlebars (laughs) while this is happening. You just hear like a as I like turn into a raven's head and scream in excitement as we tear down the road. Yeah, she's gonna add, let me piggyback, let me piggyback. And then she's gonna get on top of Dap's shoulders so that Dap is riding the tricycle, but Muffy is on top of Dap so that they're doing like a clownish stack atop this tricycle, but Muffy's living her best life. She lives for this kind of a daredevil thing. Tomlin just has both hands over his mouth, anxious, like, mmm. <laughs> The girl is also going to have both hands in her mouth, but then she's going to be like, I think it would be very instructive for me to join on this activity. And so like try to jump on top of Muffy, who is on top of Dap, and have like a three. (laughs) (laughs) A tri-stack on a tricycle. (laughs) Yeah, get up there. You got me the reins of the girl. This is what happens now. Who wants to go faster? Yes, she wants to go faster. Pedal to the metal. Okay, that's an eight, so oh, no. flames shoot out of the back, and we just haul down the road. How does this make you feel? 
how are you left wanting more? Well, is there like she thinks that the speed is just not fast enough. Like unless you're wanting more because she would like it to be faster, but it's fine. I mean, that is just as fast as this vehicle goes. Ooh, I'm sorry. This tricycle only has one horsepower. Me! <laughs> I, do do y'all like when we were fairy tales? <laughs> Guys. I was like, I assume Tublet is holding. Well, I don't know. Scout can move on her own. That's fine. We can tie Scout to the back of the tricycle. Oh Please, my God. no. <laughs> don't worry. I used my shape shifting off screen on Scout to make her have big wheels. Yes. Also, I, I love that. Like, this will be the beginning of the second part of the episode. And it's just like. <laughs> Hot disaster. Tomlin's just gonna... You see me rolling. <laughs> should play. Tomlin's just reaching out, just oh I I don't <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea, everyone. I'm not sure if it's really safe to ride a tricycle like that. That's what makes it fun! Okay. Oh no. <laughs> I feel like we have utterly derailed whatever Emily actually was having us do in this scene. We're on a tricycle. We're on our, we're getting, if anything, we're getting to the next place they want us to get even faster. If they didn't want us to steal the tricycle, they wouldn't have put a tricycle in this adventure. A flaming tricycle, a mind flaming you. A flaming tricycle. tricycle. I think it's less that we've stolen the tricycle. And more of it, I assume something was supposed to happen here, and we are just- Oh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I, I, I can <laughs> rewind that if you no, want it. it's fine. But I do just want you to sit and think about the fact that Scout said you don't have to be afraid anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> and then this tricycle has three people on it oh. going as fast as it can. And- is anyone still honking the horn? The girl is, for sure. The girl is? <laughs> Somehow from the very top of the stack, the girl is like acrobatic. When, when Tomlin is like, I don't think that's safe. She goes to honk the oh. horn. Well, the girl gets a little startled. Oh. Because this is a very special horn. Oh no. This is a horn that fits the setting really well. It sounds like whale song. Wait, wait. Oh, no. my God. No, 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 no. Oh, no. no. She would immediately <laughs> release that because she's scared of whales. Good. So she would be like, Ooh, oh. I love that sound. Oh, no. And Dap changes no. her face to be a whale head. And you just can makes X a deep whale out. sound. No, that's okay. <laughs> and just makes a deep whale sound. I don't need to X card. Uh, I think I have had enough of this tricycle, so I will <laughs> slowly step down from it. And like she will just slowly step down from it at that whale sound. Oh, already? We were just getting started. I'm just not a fan of whale sounds. And whales in general, and I didn't like the sound that the horn made, which was curiously similar to that of a whale. Ooh. Well, look, the best way to conquer your fears is to face them head on, and then Muffy will stand up a little bit further. Remember that she's afraid of heights, but oh. is stacked on top of Dap still. She has been looking down, though. She's been looking ahead, so it's been okay. So she's gonna look straight down and then waver a little bit and still looking straight down like, just conquer him head on. Just, 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 just do it. You all are so much braver than I could ever be. I don't think I could have stood up to the scary man on the bridge. I just tried to get away from the other giants who bullied me back home. But I think it's very brave that you are telling me that you don't think you're brave. Where I come from, sometimes they. Don't let us say things that worry us. We are always supposed to look happy and not scared. So it's, I like that you told me. I think that's brave. You don't think it's silly that I'm always so frightened? Absolutely not. I mean, I was also scared of that horn. That's why I went down from this tricycle. So it's good to be scared sometimes. 
then I want to challenge my manners of young ladies must always keep a smile on their face. Yeah. I'm gonna roll and see. That is as I got six. You got six. You got six. What part of your rebellion is misunderstood by others? Poor Tomlin. Oh, oh no. no. Poor Tomlin. What does Tomlin think? Poor Tomlin. Well, that's very nice, but I don't think I'd mind a place where I was only told to smile and be happy. I don't mind being that. I'm just not brave enough to be tough and scary like other giants. Uh, no, that that's not what I... That's not what I meant. I think you are a perfect giant just the way you are. Granted, I haven't met other giants, but I feel like even if I did... You would be the best one of them all. If you say so. So what's the... Oh, yeah. Um, The belief, I think it would be... It's okay to show your insecurities, maybe? Yeah, I like that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I like that, yeah. A lot better than murder is okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, Emily, what's happening? What do we see? I'd love to know. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Can you just cut out my description that I did before and put it in now? Because I described you being in a place, but then you were driving on the tricycle. Well, yeah, but we were just on a bridge. Nothing was happening. Emily described us being, like, on the seashore. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Emily. At the start of the scene. You were up. Well, we're no, driving a tricycle on the seashore. <laughs> Through the sand. Until such were... point that someone stops us. <laughs> it's a oh, God, are we going to summon a whale with this whale horn? <laughs> wait, wait, no. <laughs> Is that what happened here? No. No, I was not going to have explicit. Don't do this to me whales missed opportunity <laughs> anyway you're on the seashore what well what's happening we're just driving okay. around on the seashore well you are not driving on the seashore actually you were on the bridge and then you were on the strip of road as you continue to go really fast on the tricycle and it's really lucky that you beeped that horn and decided to get off the tricycle and that you stopped because, well, the road ends. Oh, that would have been bad. Like a sheer cliff end? Thankfully, no. Though it does end pretty close to the water. And you can't drive this motor tricycle easily in the sand. Mm. But the one thing that you were able to take away from the tree lady's instructions was you follow the path. Hmm, so the girl's gonna say, I guess this is where the path ends. At least, hmm, I wonder if this can turn into a boat of some sort and, like, try to... She's not an engineer, but, like, (laughs) maybe she can figure something out of the tricycle. Just repurpose it into a... Scout hears the tricycle screams as it's ripped apart. No, 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 no! No, she wouldn't wouldn't actually change it! I'm just kidding. However, if I did that, I would start strong to my convictions in murder is okay. (laughs) (laughs) See, here's the thing is I kind of want to try granting a wish again. Oh. But I'm very afraid of granting a wish in this case because this can backfire real bad. It could backfire very bad. You don't have to turn the tricycle itself into a boat if you grant a wish. You could just make a new boat. <laughs> That's true. But is that what Kyle Decker or Dap would do in this scenario? But then we would leave the tricycle on the beach. We could take the tricycle on the boat. <laughs> However, I don't know. Are we meant to go into the ocean? I didn't. I wasn't sure if that. It just, it looks like there should be more road, but there isn't. I'm no good at finding my way through things, unless the ocean is covering the path we are meant to take. (sighs) I can swim a little bit, but I don't know if I could (sighs) swim all the way here. (sighs) She will turn around to look at that. (sighs) What is that noise? It sounds like someone's breathing rather loudly for the smaller folk. Hmm, this place keeps getting curiouser and 
curious, sir. <laughs> Why are we such trash? <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry, Emily. Roll me. <laughs> oh, there's no rolling for curious sir and curious. It sir. isn't? Oh, there isn't. As long as the girl engages in something weird, she will get truthful oh, okay. information. Oh, I mean, I'm going to just go. She's going to just follow that sigh and see where it is. It's easy to follow, because this sigh is absurd. No one sighs like that, unless they want to be heard sighing. <laughs> and so, as you round the corner, you hear once again, <sighs> uh, Hello? Are you mad about something? <sighs> hello. Hello. <sighs> What's wrong? Well, everything's fine. I just, well. And this little crab looks up at you. Oh. And in one of its claws, it has a little violin. Oh my god, that's so cute. Because this is a fiddler crab. A fiddler crab. Oh. Oh, she will approach the crab and like, wow, that's so interesting. This violin is so small. Do you mind? And she's going to like take the magnifying glass and like try to like oh. look at it closer to see like what it's made of. It's very nice. Did you make this? Thank you. I made it, but <sighs> what's a fiddle with no bow? Oh. I can help you find it. Did you lose it in here in this place? I couldn't make a bow. Hmm. Well, I can find something around this place, surely, that can fit this. Oh, there's nothing here. Nothing. If I did have a bow, I could do anything. But there's nothing for a bow here. Hmm. Alright. Can Muffy step in? Yeah, do it. I would like to roll Wearied Traveler, uh, which is roll when you seek a location secrets and hidden treasures. Ooh. And those secrets and hidden treasures are either a bow or the materials to make a bow. I got an eight. Oh, nice. There's materials everywhere. Awesome. On a seven to nine, and I got an eight, it says, also ask the guide, what is keeping me from recovering it? Oh. So I guess I didn't actually succeed the roll because I didn't read the fine print before. I was like, <laughs> hey, that's a higher number than usual. So there are materials everywhere, but what? Oh, don't bother. There's nothing. Well, that's not true. It's, it's everywhere. Oh, no, I can't make a bow. Look, you could break this tiny stick into tinier sticks. <laughs> That's what sticks sound like when they break. Oh, that one was too big and that one was too small. Well, I'll just keep breaking the big one until it's the right size. Do you know what the right size should be? I can calculate the measurements and make the perfect one. We have materials here. Well, I know what the right size would be. Be, but no one can make it. But if I had a bow, I could probably do anything, but I don't have one, and there's nothing here to make one, and I can't make one, and you can't make one. Well, we haven't we haven't really tried. So yet. here I am sighing. <sighs> Girl, come, come here, come here, come here, come, come here, girl. And Dap is going to bring you and everyone else into a team huddle. Oh, <laughs> the crab will start sighing again as soon as you walk away. <laughs> oh, so. <sighs> so. <sighs> so. <sighs> And eventually, to respond to the sighing, Dap will change her face into the loudest animal in existence, the cicada. <laughs> oh my god, CK comes back. And with her little microphone mouth, and you can also just hear the just say, well, this crab sure is a Debbie Downer. Yeah. 
Sometimes, in order to be reminded that you don't need perfect things to sing and have fun, someone's got to show you. Can I count on you, girl? Uh, yes. So what? What are you? Are you asking? Perfect. Da dum dum dum. And she picks up the girl like in her arms and twirls her around. Oh. And she turns back to her to her horse form and just starts singing. I don't have a bow. I don't have a bow. But even though I don't have a bow, I still have. She points to the girl. Uh, a show? And she's gonna do, like, jazz hands. I still have a show! And I'm gonna roll Wild Rumpus in an attempt to get the crab to join in the revelry. Musical number time, oh my god. I love it. This does get into the heart of the crab a little bit. You know, I don't got a bow. I don't got a bow. But they're gonna ask me for something in return and it better not be a bow. (laughs) I rolled an eight. So the crab joins in. But what do they ask in return? (laughs) I really want to join in, but I don't have a bow. But you do have a show. Does anybody have a bow? Uh, Muffy, Muffy, it's you. Grab the bow. I'm trying. <laughs> Does the girl, I, I guess we never described how her hair is, is pulled, but I could make the worst world play. And if she has an actual like bow from her hair, she could take it and be like, I know this is not what you want, but it's still a bow. Would a different kind of bow make you a little bit less sad? Will you, will you put it on my head? Aww. Yes, of course. And then she's going to do that and say, you look really pretty with that. Crabs can't blush, but they would be blushing Aww. if they could. <laughs> and it's also kind of hard to gauge a crab's emotion looking at their face. But the crab seems a lot lighter and they're gonna reach up their free claw and touch the bow a little bit and then notice a single hair poking out from the little bow that came off the girl's head and pull the little hair out and tie it on either end of one of the little sticks My God, that's so that you all had broken and is adorable. place oh. the bow on their tiny little violin oh and start playing. God. And honestly, it's not the most beautiful violin music you've ever heard, but it comes from such a place of joy that it is really, really beautiful. The girl really likes it. She's actually going to have a, a sincere big smile at that music and at the crab playing with little Bo and say, I really like how you play. Without stopping playing, the crab will reply, Thank you. Can I give you something in return? Do you need my help? Um. You don't have to, but I was supposed to walk on this road, and it seems to stop in front of this ocean. I really need to follow it, but I don't know how. Do you know of any boat or secret road somewhere that I could find? Oh, I can help with that. And this little crab scuttles along sideways. Still playing their little violin. Oh my god. Oh. Seemingly expecting you to follow. Oh yeah, she definitely will will do that and motion for the party to follow. Still probably grab scout across the beach. I I do have a question though. 
Are you bringing the tricycle? Yes, yeah, definitely. Always. I, I, I assume that... <laughs> They're like, a party member now. <laughs> try, yeah. I guess some that Muffy's still on the tricycle. Absolutely. She's back on it now. She's just, yeah. I hope you didn't want this tricycle to go back to the guy, because it's not happening, Emily. He doesn't deserve this <laughs> no. tricycle. They're ride and die with us. <laughs> not ride or die. Ride and die. I did not say that wrong. Oh, no. Ride and die, because murder is okay. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> I, I I will take the girl when we cut to the next scene. Yeah. Dap got too into this hardcore party. Uh, is she still dancing like like the, the, the thing got resolved and she's still like, you may not have a power. She's just or... passed out. She oh, passed no. out hours ago. Is oh, no. just being in the back of the tricycle. <laughs> just quietly, you don't have a bow. Oh, you don't I have a bow. A show. Just kidding, you have a bow now. <laughs> you now have a two bow. Two bows. You now two, have two a bows. Bow. Uh, two bows. And the girl's going to keep. You come to the mouth of a cave. She's quietly <laughs> whistling to herself <laughs> as we get to the mouth of the tunnel. And it like echoes in the tunnel, <laughs> which she thinks is super neat. And she's like. I, I want Scout to also try to like talk with with the, <laughs> with the cave, just being like, "Are there a lot of dangers inside you? Should we be worried?" And then, "Are there a lot of dangers inside you? Should we be worried?" Yes. Oh God, that's the echo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna roll still for this. I rolled a nine, so... Oh, perfect, because it's like, what story does he tell me? Why does this story feel incomplete or confusing? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what this, what this story tells me. It's the same question. Because it's an echo. So that's why it feels incomplete and confusing. You just can't hear the R's. You just hear dangers inside. Be worried. Yes. <laughs> oh, I... I've never gone in some place that dark and scary before. Shay was scared of the dark, so we tried to have lights on whenever we went together. Maybe that's where she is. Maybe she's in this cave and it's too afraid to leave it because it's so dark. I think we should go in. Maybe I will find her here. Well, if you think Shay is in there... I can help. We'll look together. Thank you. Scout will turn, and my turn is like, because she really can't turn her head, so it's like the entire body rotation to look at the girl and be like, that is, if you want to go in, we can go somewhere else if you want. I just would like to go there. No, I believe it's best if I move forward. Are you afraid of the dark? Yes, I am afraid of the dark, but if Shay is in there, I have to go in and... The girl frowns at that. Oh. Like, does not mm. <laughs> I have a question. The runaway has a move called Free From What You Fear. Oh. They can roll when you find yourself in a dark or scary situation and tell the girl how it's going to be okay. But could I instead tell Scout how it's going to be okay? Oh, of course. We're going to roll for Free From What You Fear. Let's do it. I got a 10. Oh, yes. Oh, Yay. Yeah. oh yeah. So in each playbook, they have some questions that you answer beforehand about your character for the runaway. What part of the world are you dying to explore was one of them. And I actually chose the darkest cave when I went oh through. Oh my god, oh. what? That's so yes. cool. So Muffy is going to put a hand on Scout Aww. and say, I think it's really brave of you to go in, even though you're scared, to look for Shay. You know, heights aren't the only thing that I'm afraid of. I'm also afraid of the dark. And then she'll jump in front of the cave and do the Peter Pan stance with uh, both hands on her hips and say, that's why it's my goal to explore the darkest cave. And uh, if I'm being honest, I've kind of been avoiding it. But um, 
And then she wears like, I didn't describe her at all, but she wears kind of like a potato sack-ish dress and she'll wring the middle of it in her hands and say, It's a lot easier now that I have people to explore the darkest cave with me. So um, if Shay is in there, we'll find her and it'll be okay because we're together. It's not just one person conquering their fear. It's everybody going to conquer their fear. We're all going to conquer the fear. We're going to conquer the dark together. And then she's going to take over pulling Scout from the girl, if that's okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, Scout actually was going to say, You are right. I would love to conquer my fear with you. And it will look like she is just, like, moving to stand, like, next to Muffy. But in reality, like, what she would be trying to do is the same Peter Pan pose, but, like, oh, she can't. So it's just, she, like, is facing the same way. And, like, oh, that is what she would be doing if she could do that. Oh, that's so cute. If everyone else is being brave, I guess I have to be brave with them. I don't want you to all go in alone. So Tomlin will also just, like, get down on like his hands and knees and like crawl into the cave which is more like a small tunnel for him (laughs) letting you guys go first of course so that nobody gets stuck and you go and it's pretty scary in there because it's pretty dark and sometimes you hear spooky sounds and then you realize that it's the humming of dap echoing weirdly in the space Sounds oddly like an airplane. Right? <laughs> I also was hearing that, and I was like, did Guy land in a sound effect there? No, <laughs> we're not getting... I could... T- as Emily was talking, I'm like, there's no way we're getting this airplane out of this audio, so I am going Oops. to just lampshade the crap out of it right now. I mean, I like that it landed, that it, it, it happened right as Emily was like, you hear a sound. It was very cinematic. Yeah. Spooky sounds. It was very good. Look, it's just saving you some time with... For SFX, yeah. Sound effects, yeah. 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 Muffy remembers the airplane ride they were on that they didn't like (laughs) back in the the other world. One of the reasons she fled. Anyway! (laughs) Airplanes. They're like whales. They're too big. She is afraid of heights. But uh, you eventually turn a corner and as brave as you have been, there's some comfort in... The sunlight streaming from a hole in the ceiling. And it lights up this open chamber through which a stream flows. It sparkles. And this sunlight on the water makes these beautiful rippling patterns on the walls. And directly in front of you, along the path that had resumed, there is a statue It looks like a human holding this beautiful blue parasol. And there's a little, like, placard that has a riddle on it. Oh, no. Girl puts her magnifying glass to it right away. (laughs) Right away. I got it, 17. (laughs) So the riddle reads, When fishes get umbrellas up, if the raindrops run... Lizards will want their parasols to shade them from the sun. Just get umbrellas up. Mm. If the raindrops run, oh, man. fishes will want their parasols. But I thought lizards liked the sun. Fishes, umbrellas, raindrops, parasols. Shay used to have an umbrella when it rained so that we didn't get wet. Because sometimes we like to play outside when it rained. Oh. <laughs> Is the parasol removable? Like, if Muffy just tries to take it. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, no. Muffy just grabs it. She wants to put it on the tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you solved the riddle. So, where exactly are you? I would like to ask this of the girl. So, I'm, I'm right in front of it with my You're magnifying right glass. Like, I probably notice and turn when I say, but I thought they liked being in the sun. As, like, the beams of sunlight that weren't hitting me because of the umbrella start touching my skin. A couple of little pebbles and some dust fall on your head. As this statue, there's little crackles in the stone, and it shakes itself off and steps off the little pedestal it was on and 
stretches some more, yawns a little bit. Oh, you solved it. Hello. Hello. My name is Sandstone. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Sandstone. I'm not sure what we did, though. Well, you solved the riddle, didn't you? Uh, Muffy gonna come in here to save me or what? <laughs> did it, I was gonna say, did it work when Muffy, like, removed the parasol? Mm-hmm. Okay, Muffy's gonna look at Sandstone and be like, I'm sorry, I really just wanted to put this on our tricycle. Can I have this for our tricycle? <laughs> I, I mean, I guess. He's gonna say, has another girl come by here? And solved this puzzle too. She has green eyes and has freckles. At least last time I saw her. Maybe they have faded away like my paint. Ah, uh, I don't think any other girls have come. Some other people, but no little girls. Oh, thank you. Wait, so what? Happen. The sun woke me up. Do you want to wake up? You said other people solved this puzzle. Yes, you- I drive the boat. You want to go to the door, right? That's why people come to the cave and cross the stream and go through the forest to get to the door. The girl kind of seizes up at that a little bit. Right, the the door. Will we find what we are looking for? The door goes where you want it to go. So if you want the door to go to what you want, then you'll go there through the door. That's why it's the door, not a door. The door. Oh, I... Don't know if I've thought hard enough about where I want to go, more who I want it to be. You don't have to use the door, I guess. I don't want to leave my friends, but I think you wanted to come here, right? Um, um, I... And the girl looks around to each of her friends and notices how much... How much fun she's had with them and how how much growth they need still. How going to the door now would be cutting it all short. And I'm going to... Kyle. Refuse to mind my manners. <laughs> and I'm going to refuse the manner. Girls must never act like boys. And I roll an eight. Which means I go too far in the process, and the girl is going to take away, it is okay to get angry. And she goes, I, I, you, you know what, no, no, I don't, I don't want to use that, I don't want to use that stupid door, and I don't want to go back to that, to that bad presentation, and it was all so boring back there. And she's going to storm off in the other direction of the cave. Oh. Wait, I didn't. I'm sorry. Wait, come back. Don't leave us. Just keep storming. Oh, please don't leave. You've still got adventures ahead. It's not like the door's right there. You've still got time. Not enough. I don't have the right bow yet. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Bringing that back. (laughs) You don't have any bow, I think. Sometimes there were things that I didn't want to do, and Shay... Shay's not coming back! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! She, she's not coming back, and I don't want, I don't want to leave you like, like she did. Or, or, or go back to some place where nobody understands and, 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 and does what I want to do like Tomlin does. I just want to be like, like Muffy and Dap and go around and have fun all the time. 
I want to take this opportunity to introduce a thing that is on my roleplay that says, what is the most human thing about you? And one of the things that says there is your tears. Because you will see... <gasps> oh my god! Oh, no. <laughs> like, water. Just like... No. Like, Scout is not going to say anything, but there's just going to be, like, water running down this horse. The girl runs. She runs back out of the mouth of the cave, back down the beach and back to the bridge where she uh, sits on the edge of the bridge staring and crying into the water. Welcome to the announcement break for Quest Friends Girl Underground Part Two, I remembered as readily as I did the first time, but I'm slightly more confident because I've done one announcement break. I'm Emily. I did this session. Our theme song is Into the Wild by Miracle of Sound. Kyle did an analysis of the end of campaign survey and he's posted the results online. If you're a Patreon subscriber, you probably received an email. Otherwise, there's a link to the article on our website below. Kyle also did a casual recording talking through them if you would like to listen to that instead of read it. We're also unveiling the Marginalized Creator Spotlight, which is something we've wanted to do for a while. This spotlight will be a free promo that we'll be doing during our announcement breaks. It's open to all marginalized creators, whether it's art, music, podcasts, video games, anything. So if you'd like to share your work with our audience, you can find the application, which was created with the help of the Prism Pals podcast, in the description. Our next episode, Mission Accomplished, which I think is only one part because Kyle was more concise than the rest of us, releases Monday, January 31st. But if you'd like additional content before then, you can find stories, artwork, and and behind-the-scenes insights at patreon.com slash questfriends. doesn't know what to do with their character, they can take the girl from me and deal with the consequences of my actions. <laughs> oh, I, 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 no, I want to keep this girl. <laughs> what you've done. I'll, I'll take the girl. Dap is just gonna... What a wonderful nap! Oh my god. <laughs> I must have fallen asleep in the sunbeams. Did you not want to go on the boat? Oh, there is a boat! How exciting! Let me get into my, and her bloop, 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 and her face turns into a little bloop, bloop fish. She's like, I like sticking my head in the water while we go down the rafts. I don't think we can go on the boat yet. It's hard because Muffy thinks this is rad. Oh, and <laughs> like, that's not thematically what the story needs. Um, Muffy will go up to Scout and put a hand on, like, the back of Scout's little horse head say hey hey that was really mean you know i agreed with everything that she said up until she was mean <laughs> let me finish my sentence <laughs> you know i i she doesn't know whether shay's gonna come back or not oh but i do she is right deep down i've known for a while that she wasn't coming back I waited a long time, longer than I think it takes for girls to grow up, and I think that even if she came back, it wouldn't be Shay. Um, you know, I'm real sorry about Shay, but it seems to me that part of life is being able to move on to new parts of it. I would love if she stayed here, and that's what I want still, I think, but something about it made me sad, too. And I think maybe it's really scary to give up on parts of your life that you like. Like this. 
but new parts can be fun too. And, um, you know, you may not have Shay anymore, but you have all of us. I have had a lot of fun with you. Sometimes it reminded me of the fun I had with Shay because it was the same kind and I hadn't felt it in a long time. So thank you. I would love to try and move on. It, it will be hard, but I think I can try to do it with you. Tomlin is, because he's so much bigger than everyone else, he can't quite hug people the right way. So instead, Aww. what he does is he, like, tries to wrap you in, Aww. like, his fingers, like, try and sort of do a hug in between Aww, his fingers. Oh, that's so cute. And say, I am very sorry. It's sad to lose people you care about, but I am here as well. Scout will, like, lean to the finger, like, cluck. <laughs> Yeah, like leaning into the hug, but like there's only so many movements she can make, so it's just like, eh. And as you lean into the hug, you feel something that is on the surface gross, but probably the most (laughs) affectionate feeling in the world. Oh no. You feel a tuft of fur and then just this wet, (gasps) sloppy tongue. Oh my god. As Dap with a golden retriever head just plops it on your shoulder. Oh! And does a. Oh! (laughs) Thank you, everybody. I feel a lot better now. I really like having you as my friends. I lost Shay, but I gained you. To the tricycle! And then I want little, like, Batman, like, da little little la Batman music after that. And then we're all going to ride the tricycle to go get the girl. Oh, can I take this parasol? Uh, or do you need it? I guess you could keep it. Yay! The tricycle has a parasol now. da little little la The girl, when you find her, is, like, huddled into the trench coat. Aww. Just, like... Pulled her arms into the sleeves, pulled like the collar up over her head, and is like balled up inside of it. Well, my, my, what a mess we have here! And Dap will just jump off of the uh, tricycle and plop herself right next to the girl on the bridge. Do you want to talk about it? Not really. Why not? Buffy pops down on the other side. Because I just want to. I just want to see more places, travel with you. There's nothing wrong with that. We don't we don't always have to follow the path. We can just carry on our way or maybe maybe when we take that door we can just go to Tomlin's village or any any other place, anywhere else we like. You know that sounds really awesome. But um isn't there somebody waiting for you back home? Maybe. But they're not really waiting at home. They're probably out working somewhere else. I never really get to spend a lot of time with people like we have, and so it's it's nice, you know? Why can't it always be like this? Because then it'd be boring. Always is a tricky thing to say, my dear. Things always be this way if things were always the same way. Well, then... And her face turns to a snapping crocodile. We'd still be hunted and scared. And then it turns into a little crab. And I'd still not have a bow. And then it turns into a lizard. And I'd still be napping under the parasol. (laughs) And she's gonna wipe her eyes a bit and say, No, that's not really the best impression of sandstone. (laughs) <laughs> well, forgive me for doing creative liberties. I thought it was pretty good. Okay, I thank you, and I'm sorry for running away. We can we can keep going. I don't know what I'm ready to do, but I want to adventure with you all while we still have time. And she'll kneel down and, and hug Scout and say, Aww. I'm sorry. You shouldn't be. You only said the truth. And I am glad I had adventures with you, too. You're a good person, and you shouldn't be left alone again. Thank you. I think you are a good person, too. Well, I do not always act like it. 
I don't think anybody acts like a good person every time. We are allowed to have moments where we're not that. That doesn't mean that we won't be here for one another in those times. Anyway, I, I've updated that belief to say it is okay to get angry, as long as we don't hurt those we love. Aww. But murder is still okay. Murder is still okay. <laughs> well, you know, you're not hurting someone you love in that instance. It's true, it's true. Exactly. Anyway, can we say you speed back? Down the old town road on down your the old town road tricycle. Gonna ride like I can't no more. <laughs> That's fine. Anyway, back to Sandstone. We're back. Oh, you came back. Yes, I am sorry, but I think we are ready to ride on the boat now. I'm glad you want to ride on the boat. And Sandstone will lean down and scoop up some of the sparkling water in their hand and toss it back out and as it hits the water a beautiful I was about to say small but it can't be too small it can't be too small we have a, a ogre in here a giant a beautiful ogre and friend sized boat appears it's like a motorcycle on a side <laughs> carriage. So just this tiny boat and a tiny giant side carriage. It's a bigger tricycle, but it's a water tricycle. Oh, it's yes. got little paddle wheels like a tricycle would have. It's <laughs> anyway, so that happened and you're in a boat. And after many more wondrous and fantastical adventures that are not covered in this one shot, but definitely happened. <laughs> a breeze rustles the canopy, and the shifting greens of the moss and the ferns in the grassy forest floor are bright against deep purple leaves. The light is dim, but will-o'-wisps illuminate the path before you. And you're back in the plum trees of the magical forest that you found yourself in at the beginning. And you realize you've actually just gone in a circle. But you're at the door. Well, mostly. Not quite. The door's around here somewhere. Could I use my weary traveler to seek a location secrets and hidden treasures to look for the door? Mm, I got a two. <laughs> Snake eyes. Snake eyes. Snake eyes. What a Halley roll. Uh, yeah, so just, uh, one sec. I stopped myself from swearing. I also stopped myself from swearing. So really, I'm the winner. Uh, oh, so it says, ask the guide, what do I find instead of the treasure? Huh. Something's odd. That tree right there. You were just rustling around at its base. As you do, and then you realize that it's not the base, it's the canopy. Oh, how did I get up here? Oh, no! What the ah! Ah! Little bell sound as one of the will-o'-wisps giggles. <laughs> wow, good one! It's like literally a circle right back, right back where Muffy started. You're in the tree now. I'm in the tree now. This is my home now. <laughs> hey, are you okay up there, Muffy? She'll look back down, realize that was a mistake, and look back at the little branch that she's hugging herself to and go, Yeah, I've done this before. Just uh just uh do what you did that first time, you know? Just keep just keep just keep just keep just keep uh just saying the words. And you don't have to roleplay that out, but Muffy will climb down if she is having a conversation with a girl. She will also climb up to meet Muffy partway, and they'll climb down together. Oh, to meet her halfway. Aww. And that's when you find the door. I don't want to describe the door. I want to ask the person who laid the girl at the beginning and is playing the girl now, what does your front door look like? Oh. My front door. It's this sort of 
brown to tan paint over like, you know, that classic beveled look that some doors have where they like sink in a little bit. It's a little bit chipped at some of the edges, not exactly from lack of care, but just, you know, time passing, little things in storms, but just hadn't been fixed yet. And there is a brass knocker and a little plate near the top that says, you'll always know when you're home. That's a lovely door. And it's time. Looking at the door, she turns around to everyone and holds out a hand and says, Would you like to come with me? My home doesn't have a lot of magic or fawns or giants, so I don't know what it'll be like for everyone, but I would really love it if you all came along too. That sounds like the most exciting thing I could think of. We had a lot of adventures here. I think I'm ready to have a lot of adventures back at your home, too. It sounds very scary, but I think I could be brave if I were with you. So she turns the doorknob, opens it up, and gestures for everyone to walk through. And after everyone else, Dap will walk to the door, cross her arms and look to you and say, Well? Do you want to come too? Oh, go out there to the wide world, the endless audience. Is that what I wish? (laughs) Oh, in so many ways. But my own wishes aren't mine to grant, are they? But they could be. They could be, they could be. But... Which is a lot like people, dear. Tricky thing is that sometimes they don't always get along, and we have to do what we can to make them cooperate. I could follow my wish to leave here all I want, but if I did... And the girl notices that the door she's holding onto is no longer there. Certain other, more important ones, go away. The girl looks like she's about to say something more, but instead she'll just hug Dap quietly. And Dap will hug you back. And as Dap gives you a hug, the door reforms itself around you. And as she walks away, she turns back and transforms her face into one of a elderly human woman. And she gives you a wink and says... I told you you were following me the whole time. And she will step through the door. So I asked you the beginning, who you were, and one of the questions you answered was, how did the girl find you? How does she find you when she returns to her own world? So... Basically, like, when they were going through the door, I like to imagine that Buffy was probably, like, pulling Scout along. And Buffy would, like, then feel a little snout push her a little bit. Like, you know, how, like, playful kind of thing. And then if, like, Buffy turned around, she would see a big brown horse with, like, white hair on top and on on the tail. So that will be Scout, and she would just look at everybody, super excited. I assume that because this is like normal world, she can speak, but she would just like be doing excited like and start like galloping a little bit around because now she can move and do other things. She can go on lots of different roads. She can do it. Lots of different and like turn around in all of these different angles and stuff. And the girl's mother screams as she sees a horse in the entry hall. Now you have a horse. Now you have a horse. Have fun with that. True horse girl. The girl looks at her mom and in typical kid fashion of asking, can we keep it, says, we are keeping her. (laughs) And also we're keeping this other girl, I guess. Also, here's a child. I was going to say. You're gonna have to say that about Muffy. She ran away and became like a lost child. And the reason she ran away, I answered this question on my little sheep. What were you running away from? And it was boredom. But actually, Muffy has come to realize through her adventures that she wasn't so much bored as she was lonely. 
and now she has a little support group, and one of them is a horse yeah. that she loves very much. Oh. Muffy's surprised! That's a horse girl all along! Everyone's a horse girl! So now, because I'm a sucker for adopted kid stories, uh, she's been adopted as the girl's sister. That's just what's happening. <laughs> wait, wait, did we bring the tricycle with us? Oh, oh my god, did we have the tricycle? <laughs> we brought the tricycle. Is the tricycle like a rad motorcycle now? Like a big, like... Is it a Vespa? Is it a Vespa? <laughs> Is it a Vespa? Tell us we got a Vespa. It's gotta be a Vespa, please. Actually, out front, perhaps, you would see, like... A young man wearing, like, a thick, old-timey-looking coat and scarf and boots, like Tomlin had worn, and, like, a dapper newsboy cap. Sitting there on a Vespa with little flames drawn on it, and he tips his cap to them and says, well, I don't mind being a bit smaller. This size, uh, just feels just right. Yeah, so the girl wow. some other time finds herself at a different presentation. This one is the watering hole hole. It is a hole that drained all of the water out of a lake. So now it's just a very boring pit. And this guy's presenting and he's like, So the watering hole the hole used to be called the watering hole. It was called that because the citizens would go to it for water. That is... Until President William Taft came in and he continues on this boring rant that the girl is here with Muffy. I imagine the two of them are trying to like get each other to like pay attention <laughs> and helping with notes. And at one point the girl looks around and she spots in the distance this little figure off in the woods by the watering hole. And the she, watering hole hole. By the watering hole hole. <laughs> and she picks up her magnifying glass, which she also uses as a spy glass. And she can see in the distance a girl walking to a door. And she smiles to herself. of the slumber life at the close of the sleep face in the world with a hunger clambering out of the deep blank slate a trip to begin look to tomorrow clean plate a fresh little wind to follow into the wild, into the vast, into the beauty emerging at last, into the wild, into the fray, up and away. Into the wild, into the vast, into the beauty emerging at last, into the wild, into the fray. because you didn't write yours in so I had to like remember what it was on the fly oh my so, god let me rewrite it hold on the is... opposite of like oh what it's god. supposed to be let me, let me fix it like, I wanna... <laughs> I'm going to fight the <laughs> protect <laughs> oh, it's so good thank you for not deleting the murder is okay Tom 
It's important to me that that stays there. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't going to f- around with that. <laughs> Take a uh, fifty cents. Swear jar. Swear jar. I'm at four effing dollars. <laughs> also, I like that now we have two role plays in which there are whale sounds in the role play. Because I also had like Nicholas scream like a whale. Why? Hallie, do what must be done. What? What do you mean? Add a whale. Add a whale in your... To clone a high. I can't. I can't. No, because you already asked me to be Moby Dick, and I said, no, but I'll allow Herman Melville, and that's the closest we'll I'll get. I'll see if Pliny has any whale-based cures and see if I can add those. No. Wasn't Pliny at least aware of Emperor Claudius and the whale? Of Claudius punching a whale. Yeah, I might bring that up. That's... <laughs> Not gonna be for me. Anyway, you're on the seashore. I am so sorry, Emily. We are the worst players this session. <laughs> we have not allowed Emily to do anything. We are genuinely the worst. This sounds so sad, Crab. Let me play you a song on the world's tiniest violin. But they aren't. I know. They can't. I know. That's the tragedy of it all. That's the tragedy of it all. They can't play Despacito. It's a no. I'm going to send it to you in the Zoom chat, but I'm also obviously going to read it aloud. I purposefully did not make it very hard. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see you in two hours. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, Alec, do you want to read this <laughs> while we try to figure out what it is? Also, did you say Alec? Yeah, like Alec Trebek. <laughs> oh, like the... F- oh, oh, no. <laughs> that was two. Ah, two. That's two in a row, baby. That's two in a row. That's another dollar. That's another dollar. <laughs> oh, no. I was going to say, like, the man from the Jeopardy game. Yes. Yes. That is, that is Alex Trebek from Jeopardy. The deceased Jeopardy man. I like how our first episode is us just messing around for, like, an hour and a half, and then we kill a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one, we have a bunch of super cute scenes. An I, emotional resonance. <laughs> I feel like these need to be rearranged. But I feel like this is like our aesthetic though. Like I feel like it's it's part of like the quest friends aesthetic is us just like having cutesy moments and suddenly just like emotional gut punch and then like back to like oh let's have silly moments in here. Back to the tricycle. Back to the tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> I realized when I was like, I only steal from people who don't need it. That implies that the man didn't need the tricycle anymore because he was dead. You don't need much when you're dead. (laughs) Oops. Murder is okay. It's just sort of hitting me that we kicked Air Collet down a ravine and took his Vespa. (laughs) Anyway, 550. You killed Hallie. It was worth it, though. It was so worth it. <laughs> we never got this guy's name, so he's Senior Vespa until Emily says otherwise. <laughs> Senior Vespa. Well, so here's the thing. I was going to have him be like the final confrontation, but I don't think we have time anymore. I don't think we need one. I think he's dead. I in your part <laughs> So that man's just dead now. He's not coming back. We actually murder is okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, I don't mind being a bit smaller. This size uh, just feels just right. He sounds like the chimney sweep from Mary Poppins. I know. I was like, oh my god, this is some like English troll here. I love it. Super califragilisticexpialidocious. Even the sound of it is such a quite a troll. Specifically a bird English troll. Yeah, specifically a bird. Off goes the English man on a Vespa. We have a horse now. We have a child, and there's a strange man on a Vespa who seems to know us. This guy. Anyways, Emily, I'm sorry, and you're welcome. (laughs) 